Alexa, open the upstairs shade to 0%. I'm not quite sure what went wrong. Sweet. Hey guys, this is Richard with Automate Everything, and today I'm going to try to automate my roller shades. And I want to do it using DIY parts that you can get off the shelf. No 3D printing required, but reasonably cheap. So here it goes. I have no idea how this is going to turn out, but I bought the parts that I think I need, and let's see if it actually works. Okay, so here are the parts. So first of all, this is the motor right here. Uh, this was about 50 bucks, and if you've ever looked at shade motors before from the big companies like Somfy, they cost usually around 250 bucks a piece. So getting this one for 50 bucks, I hope it works well. But again, I wanted to do something cheap and fairly DIY. So this is what I got here. It's from a company called Roller House. I'm pretty sure they're Chinese. It's definitely made in China. And it's a simple 12 volt DC motor. That's it. It's nothing fancy like a stepper motor or anything like that. It's simply a DC motor. And it's housed in a 1.5 inch roller tube. And 1.5 inches is what happens to be the size of the roller tubes for my shades that are right there. So this should hopefully do the job. Okay, and uh, here is a DPDT switch. DPDT meaning double pull, double throw. And all this does is, is if I do this, it will turn the motor in one direction, say clockwise. I do this, it'll turn the motor counterclockwise. So this one is specifically meant to be used for, um, it's a momentary switch and you can see it says motor on one side, power on the other. So it's specifically meant to control a motor, either linear actuator or a DC motor in this case. So this will allow the motor to raise and lower the shades manually. And that's okay, I wanna do it manually to start so that uh, first I can make sure that it works and then add the automation afterwards. Uh, speaking of automation, this is how the automation is gonna be achieved. It's called a Cubino. This is specifically meant for controlling roller shades and I looked it up online and it said, hey, um, this hopefully does the job. I don't know anything about this thing other than it says that it's supposed to be able to add Z-Wave functionality to an existing wall controlled, switch controlled uh, you know, motor system. So let's see if that does the job. I will figure that out as I go. And then this is just a 12 volt power supply. I It takes 120 volts out of the wall and converts it to 12 volts. That'll help do my testing for the motor. And last but not least, these are just you know little mounts and stuff like that that will allow me to be able to hopefully uh, do this without requiring any specialized, uh, I guess, parts that I have to 3D print or anything like that. Because you look at other guides that do these DIY jobs and they, they get pretty crazy with fabricating custom parts specifically for their, for their window. I don't want to get into that. So anyway, let's get started. Okay, so here's what I've done so far. So I have that little tube inside of my new my old roller shade i have the old clutch popped out it's sitting right there so that's the little manual drawstring sort of set up there this is the other end of it i couldn't get it in it was really really tight fit that was the first major problem i ran into it's supposed to be for 1.5 inch tube but i really think that i'm if i do another one of these i'm gonna have to shave the edges down a little bit so it fits in my tube better because I pretty much had to get a hammer to it. And in fact, I tried to get a hammer on this one and ended up destroying it. That wasn't a very good idea. So um, I left the old end on and for now it works. So that's like the original um, other end of the roller shade. This is the motor end. And without doing any programming at all, uh, if I push the button, this is what it does. So it lowers, awesome. It only goes that far though, so I think it needs some additional programming. I push the other direction of the switch, and it goes up about that far. But I'm encouraged because it's not a very loud motor, so that was my worry, right? I buy this cheap $50 motor, I'm worried it's gonna be loud and really janky sounding, but it actually sounds pretty smooth, um, I have to say. So I'm quite happy with what I'm hearing here and what I'm seeing. It's fast, it's smooth, it's not like shaky or anything like that. So I'm really happy with what I'm getting for the money. Now I just wanna see if I can program it to where it'll go all the way down and all the way up um, by using the buttons. So there's a little P program button on the top of this thing. 
Um, you can kind of see it right there. So I'm gonna see if I follow the directions if I can get that going. The manual programming is done and it took probably about five minutes. So despite the janky, uh, horribly translated instructions, uh, there was obviously Chinese translated to English, it actually wasn't that hard to do. All I did was that red button that I showed earlier, I held it down for about six seconds, it beeps three times, and then you push the down direction until you want it to stop and then you let go. And then you hold the button down for six seconds again, you push the up direction, take it as high as you want to go, and then you let go, and then, it, and then you've set your limits. That's it. So, so right now I'm pushing up, it doesn't go any higher, that's great, now I'll push down. It's going down. You can see I'm holding the button here. You can see it automatically stopped. Now I go up. So that's probably a little bit high, but I think that once I automate this thing anyway, I'm gonna make sure that I set it to a limit that it'll stop um, probably before that level. But regardless, it doesn't go any further than that, so that's still pretty safe. So that's it. Now I'm gonna try to actually make this thing a smart shade because as it is right now, okay, yeah, it's automatic, but it's not smart. So now I gotta get that little Cubino in there and then see if I can get it working wirelessly. Okay, I'm back. So I haven't finished the wiring yet, but I've almost got it complete. But here's what I've got so far. So this is that little Cubino thing. And this is the switch, the giant thing right there. So the wires that are connected there, that's the output that's actually supposed to go to the motor. I disconnected the input power side of it because the power is actually gonna go into this instead. And as you can see, those two small wires there, those go up to the motor. So that's how the directions say to do it. Now, I've got the uh, zero volt for uh, wire coming out of the power supply connected right now. And the only wire that I haven't connected yet is the power wire, because as soon as I put that power wire in, according to the directions for this thing, it's gonna go into inclusion mode. So I want it to be able to pair up with my, with my home assistant the moment that I connect that wire. So before I connect that wire, I'm gonna go ahead and put the home assistant into Z-Wave inclusion mode. Configuration, Z-Wave, and I'm going to say Add Node, and you can see Z-Wave Add Node is on, so it is in inclusion mode right now. Okay, so right there you can see um, I actually had to disconnect and reconnect the wire once but that's all I did. I disconnected and reconnected the wire with it in Z-Wave inclusion mode and it picked it up. So there was really nothing special that I had to do there. I just, uh, I literally, I connected that power wire and with my home assistant in inclusion mode, it added it. So there it is right there. Let's see what happens if I bring it down. down. So uh, where I last left the video, I tried to press the button on my home assistant and it did absolutely nothing. So I had to make a modification. I never liked the idea of just having the wires for the input side of the uh, switch just hanging there. So what I did was I put the input wires back into the power supply in parallel with the power wires that are going into Cabino. And, um, and then what I did was I literally, I hit the up button, I hit the down button, and that's it. Now you can see what happens. So if I press this button, it automatically lowers it. Now, yeah, obviously I pressed the up button, so I need to fix that, and then I push stop, and it just stopped where it was. Now I'll let it continue to go down. So it's, it's still got some quirks. Okay. Oh, there go. Yeah, there it goes. So I guess if I want to go in the opposite direction, I gotta push the one below it. And there, now it went back up. 
But again, as you can see, the opposite arrow that I'm pushing is what's causing it to go in the direction I want it to go. So now I'll push up again, and it'll go all the way down. So obviously now that I have that thing automated, I can do some pretty cool little automation routines. So an obvious automation routine to do with something would be to have it tied to the sunrise. So, hey, yeah, and see, this is obviously kid approved here. Okay, the last aspect it is to this is going to be voice control. So all I did is Home Assistant is linked up with my Amazon Alexa, which I, I just brought over here just as a test. And all I did was I went to my Amazon Alexa and I went ahead and I told it to find, new, discover new devices and it found my shade, which I gave it the name in Home Assistant Upstairs Shade, again, just as a test. And it's still got some quirks to it. Again, the, the ups and the down arrows aren't really pointing in the right direction. And um, um, Alexa complains, but it still does what it wants it to do. So here, I'll just go ahead and see. So right now, it is all the way up. Alexa, open. Okay, let's try that again. Alexa, open the upstairs shades to 50%. I'm not quite sure what went wrong. <laughs> see, so she complains and says, I'm not quite sure what went wrong but still does what it says. Alexa, open the upstairs shades to 100%. I'm not quite sure what went wrong. And there it goes. So really, what I, it's, it's seen as an analog device, so I can just give it um, a percentage, and 100% is all the way closed, and 0% is all the way open. Alexa, Open the upstairs shades to 0%. I'm not quite sure what went wrong. Pretty cool. So, automated shades looks like a success. I'm really happy with what I got. Um, so, total in parts, uh, the Cubino, 50 bucks. The motor, 50 bucks. That's 100 bucks right there. That switch was another, um, it was like 15 bucks. That's pretty expensive for a switch. I think the next one I'll make myself for much cheaper. Um, and uh, this one was pre-wired to be a motor, uh, motor switch. So I can easily do that wiring myself. Probably save another 10 bucks on that. So I think all in, uh, not including power supply, which again, I just bought, just bought this little tiny little wall work as a, as a test. Um, probably about a hundred and ten bucks per shade which again if you go with the big boys just for the motor alone that's not including anything else it's gonna be about 250 bucks now the other thing you can see here obviously this is not a permanent solution with all these wires hanging here that's why I did this so I actually have wiring that goes all the way down to a centralized location in a closet downstairs and all I can do is instead of having all this crap hanging out down here, I can have it actually going through that wall into my closet where it can be all nice and hidden. So obviously not everybody has the luxury of doing that. Um, I got this house designed and built um, from the ground up and I requested that we that I pre-wire all my windows like this because I knew that I wanted to automate the shades. So if you don't have this, what you can do instead is buy an RF version of this and then see, um, just do an RF switch and um, hide all this wiring inside and just have the, you have to find a way to power it somehow, um, but more than likely it'll be battery powered. So I didn't like the idea of having batteries because obviously you'll have to change them periodically, um, but if that doesn't bother you, you can easily do uh, battery powered shades and avoid all this wiring. So that's it, I hope you liked the video. I think this is a really cool thing. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a long time now. So if you like it, give a thumbs up, um, leave me some comments, let me know what you think. Thanks, bye.